Don't feel like watching movies, so I'll watch people get them instead. I don't know how it goes. I think it starts with your uh, 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 show. Okay, and I'm gonna clap it. So yes, perfect. So everyone at the count of three. So we'll do one, two, three, clap. Okay. We'll do it together. Okay. One, two, three, clap. Oh, Wonderful. Great. Yeah. And now I start recording. Yes. <laughs> guys, guys, welcome. Welcome one and all to the Valley Cast. Today's program is very, very special because mm -hmm. we have a warm, handsome boy Ooh. here with us today. Yeah. Joe Barrett is here, ladies and gentlemen. Round Thank you for having me. Joe Barrett is here. Uh, quite an honor. And, we uh, also have Matt Bennett. Okay. That's hey, guys, show. welcome to the show. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Steve, I'm lost in the tall grass. Steve, help. <laughs> oh no, honey, we shrunk <laughs> the bennet. <laughs> Ants. Dude, did your love of Vore come from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids like it did for me? Vore? Oh, you don't know what Vore? Okay, guys, You're welcome to, to the show. educated. Bob. Welcome to the show. <laughs> truly, truly, Steve, truly. I'm only 18. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the show. I am honored to uh, welcome first timer, first comer to the Valley cast. Elliot my good Morgan. friend, Matt Bennett. Ellie oh, Morgan. Yes. <laughs> and Matt Bennett's here. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, dude, Matt Bennett's here and I'm so excited, dude. Welcome. Happy to be here. I've been having so much fun. Steve, you have saved my life this pandemic. We've been playing <laughs> Fortnite. So I hadn't seen Steve in maybe four years. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And we reconnected over Fortnite, and it's just been such a ray of sunshine <laughs> in this awful, awful, awful year. So you know, yeah. we we, we have to find forward. we have to find joy anywhere we can, right? And I've found my joy in being able to play a game designed for children with my friends. <laughs> with designed my... to to uh, put a sense of of uh, um, insecurity in children because they don't have enough skins and they don't have all the right emotes. Right, dude. Right. Oh my God, you're speaking my language right now. My son, you got the skins. It's such a racket. It and if it's not legendary, so don't even talk to me about it. It's I want a legendary skin, baby. Ten to twenty dollars a skin. Yeah, yep. and it's not they, and cheap. They, it, it's like it's like Pokemon cards on steroids. Yeah, because you at least got something physical when you bought Pokemon. Yeah, cards. that's the crazy mm -hmm. part about it. It's like I've been trying to explain it to people who don't, or like who I kind of like indoctrinate into it, because it has been an incredible tool for reconnecting with old friends like Matt yes. and I, and also keeping in touch with close friends that you used to see all the time and now don't get to. And so it's really kind of filled that gap. Um, but it's just essentially like collecting toys. Like if any if any of you ever collected toys or collected anything, then you'll probably get as hooked as some of us have become. Mm -hmm. It is and it isn't. Here's where I contend that it isn't. Because okay. especially for my son, it's like you get the, it's almost like a drug. It's like, dad, I just want the one and then I'm not gonna want another one anytime soon. And then you get it. And then the moment there's a new one, which is every hour. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. Every day. Then they're like, they completely forget the 20 that they already have and they just want the new one. <laughs> where, where I get like a little upset as a, uh, a curmudgeon old father trying not to spend money is it, it doesn't change the game. <laughs> like there's yeah. no benefit to getting any of them, <laughs> nothing Ex whatsoever. That's why I am saying it's like toy, it's like collecting toys. Like, especially when you were a kid, it was like, you go to the toy aisle, you're like, oh man, I, I got Michelangelo, I got Leonardo. Oh, Baxter Stockman's here. I gotta get Baxter Stockman. It's like literally that, dude. And but it doesn't they bully matter. You. They bully you. I remember when I used to play with <laughs> random kids online, they'd be like, oh, look at this no skin. That's what they call people who yeah. don't buy skins. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This stupid no skin. <laughs> no skin. <laughs> Or, or this you. Oh, we got we got bodied by this default. I'm an body. adult. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an adult feeling insecure because children are making fun of me online. You play well, like a bot. The way I see it. Is. This is the way I see it. The way I see it is we got to introduce our children to gambling one way or another. Yeah. And addiction and, and GameStop. Uh,
GameStop, you know, the whole GameStop thing didn't exist. <laughs> right. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah, like, meanwhile, we're all jumping into this, like, GameStop thing. And because, like, you know, fuck the rich, eat the rich or whatever everybody keeps talking about. But um, but we'll get to that shit. There's a lot to talk about. I want to jump in oh. really quickly, though, with who the hell you are, Matt Bennett, for in oh. case there are people here, absolute degenerates that don't know who you are, sir. Degenerate. Deep question. <laughs> No uh, skins, Bennett, like who are you? Yeah, a bunch of no skins out there not knowing who Matt Bennett is. Yeah. I'm a book lover. I like collecting <laughs> records and playing games. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm an actor out here in Los Angeles. I worked, uh, I've done a bunch of cool things. I was on a show called Victorious. It was a Nickelodeon show. Woo! And- <laughs> That's my main claim to fame, but I also, I had little roles in movies like Bridesmaids, where I played yeah. Helen's stepson. I'm the guy, uh, guy who said, fuck off, Helen, which still, to, like, right. Ooh, just brought me back like, with that. The kids love me, and their moms now love me, because they're all like, that's a sweet spot, dude. You're so in a weird. good spot. It's a great but, so, spot. Victoria's, it's a weird situation, because we first aired 10 or 11 years ago, mm-hmm. and so before the pandemic, I had started going to bars, and I was having people come up to me saying, you were my childhood. I go, how is that possible? Like, if you were 10 or 11 when the show first aired, you're now going to bars. You're 21. So oh, damn. This, That's I was crazy. very excited to, to explore that and figure out what that new dynamic was. And then the pandemic hit. So, oh, uh, man. Congrats. Yeah, I don't know. When this is all over. But then we're on Netflix. So now people are going to just. Oh. I know for a fact people like fall asleep while watching the show. It's like the Truman Show, you know? Dude, people for like real. Like, like take baths watching Victoria. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally one of those shows you could just leave on. And it's like, I used to leave on like the Disney Channel mm-hmm. when I was like a teen teenager in 1980 82 <laughs> it's, it's cheery and colorful yeah and, and it's and you're you never know. gonna get a, tr- a commercial for a scary movie even though i wanted to see it <laughs> i just didn't want to see it at night <laughs> i didn't want to see a scary movie trailer while i'm going to bed and i knew the disney channel wouldn't do it and i feel like your show is certainly one of those shows that you can kind of just leave yeah. on it's comforting and it's funny how many uh how many seasons was it we did technically four they uh, okay. they cut the last one up into two, um, but we did sixty episodes. So it take it took up like what, three years of your life, four years of your life. Yeah, I started at uh, late seventeen and I ended at twenty one. Wow. wow, and that's like where and the, is that Ariana Grande's first? Yes, so that's the other reason why we've stayed super relevant was it was the show that launched ariana oh who, who the fuck is the ariana grande and who's this, who's this? <laughs> Hew it up. <laughs> let's go to a clip <laughs> we just yeah, cut to a documentary about ariana grande <laughs> i mean that's the, the whole podcast one, it's a really good one yeah no I'm, I'm, we I'm, also I'm had liz gillies who's the star of dynasty and avin jogia who's done a bunch of stuff he was a tut he was young tut in the in that spike tv thing he yeah in Zombieland. Oh. they had matt bennett who's on the valley podcast <laughs> and Fortnite, and, and i started a tiktok you know? <laughs> dude i we're gonna jump all around your career and we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about and we won't do like the whole like uh oh what are you up to and all the dang like oh interview shit like this is just kind of a shoot the shitty kind of like let's just chat and but um, we'll start with this question why do you hate your parents right God. i mean well as a unit, or can I separate? Them <laughs> like, well, we can do I've a two parter. We can make this a two parter. Yeah. Okay, so my father. This one's. A- <laughs> Let's start um, with him. But dude, I don't think you know that. Um, because you were in a movie called The Virginity Hit. Yeah, that's right. With that was the first thing I, I did. That was your first big. Like you didn't do commercials or anything like that before that. Oh yeah, I did commercials. Um. I, I, they're all really funny to go back on. I have a great one. I did an abstinence commercial. <laughs> talk to your kids about having sex. And I'm so excited because it's online. And I don't like, there's a tagline that's so good. I'm saving it for like, if I ever am big enough to be on Jimmy Fallon or something. Perfect. <laughs> the perfect clip. Especially because I had been at Warp Tour that weekend. And so I'm sunburned and my lips are like even bigger than they are naturally. And I'm just like, this. talk to me about sex, Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful oh there's nothing better than uh there's nothing that, that screams abstinence more than a sunburnt boy with big lips <laughs> <I> mean, <Yes. laughs> but um 
you know, speaking of kind of like Nickelodeon and commercials, you know, Elliot was in a Nickelodeon commercial, maybe the same time, maybe earlier. I don't know. That but that's a weird connection where you guys are probably both kind earlier. Of- my Nickelodeon foray was when I was still living in Florida. Nickelodeon used to be based in Orlando. Yeah. And I was part of the Because We Can campaign. And it was my first audition I ever went on as a kid. I was 13, but I looked eight. And Nailed I just it. danced in front of a bunch of uh, wow, yeah, and danced in front of a bunch of people. And he yeah, looks exactly the same, which is basically, basically terrifying. <laughs> you were 13 in that commercial? Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, so wow, I'm you... I'm 29 right now. What's are we similar? In 33 age? myself. 33. I'm 33. Okay, so... so you would have been nine. So it's, yeah, it's definitely way before you would have been doing Victorious. Well, let's cut to a clip Probably and find it. out. Oh. Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> clip. Maybe are there we'll... clips on this show? There's, we have clips. No. No, there's I mean, no it, kind of if the editor wants to. <laughs> um, it depends. Is he on one today? Yeah. Dude, so I don't know if you know this, but okay, so you were in the virginity hit um, with Zach Perlman, who's yes. also done some Valley Folk stuff with us. Not okay. Valley Cast yet, but he's been in, uh, he was in a Santa Steve video we did uh, during Christmas time. Um, um, for people at home, you might know Zach Perlman as A. A. Ron from Key and Peel. That's, that's right. Awesome. People go crazy for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's the number one thing they yell at him. I feel yep. like <laughs> when he's out in the in the in the pandemic stricken streets. But um, did you not realize he was A. A. Ron? Jim? I did not, and I, you guys just threw me for a loop. And I started watching Key and Peel clips online again recently, and oh my god, they're perfection. Yeah, <laughs> they're, just they're so, so good. good. I'm so sad it it ended. It didn't need to end. Although if we got get out Look, out of yeah, it. Yeah, get out, you know, I think that's a step up. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We um, got but get out. Know. And then Keegan Michael Key is also just like he's on an acting tear. He's in everything. <laughs> yeah, the only oh, thing yeah. I've seen is that improv movie. Did you did you watch that movie about uh mm-hmm. the drama at UCB and yeah, yeah. Oh, what yeah. the hell is that? It's the Mike oh, Birbiglia um, movie. The Mike Birbiglia, yeah. Oh yeah. damn, I want to see that. It's good. And then he was also in that uh, Ryan Murphy. We were talking about Ryan Murphy earlier. He made prom which just came out on Netflix and Keegan-Michael Key's in that as well. What? Yeah. Dude, all these connections are making my brain spin. Let's cut to a clip. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so Matt, so yes. back, back when you were doing the virginity hit, I was working at a place called Sony Pictures Digital never heard of what is sony pictures so So, (laughs) i've I've decided that feigning ignorance isn't funny anymore (laughs) like you know when you're at a party and you meet somebody and and but you like you already know them and then the host comes like oh do you guys know each other go no i don't don't." oh i I do hate that we go back I've just had it's bit. not funny anymore, but well, it always so. makes the person who's the butt of that feel like absolute shit. Yeah, because they're yeah. like, I was just trying to do a nice thing, Ooh, and you guys are no. being absolute shitheads. Yeah, yeah, we know each other. Yeah. This is my doula. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We helped give birth to my my child. Although I did like, like that when we started the podcast, you did the old, uh, we did the sync clap, and then you were like, okay, and now I start recording. Yeah, and that was a good switcheroo, and I like a good switcheroo sometimes. Cool, man. A well placed switcheroo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, okay, so I was working at Sony Pictures Digital at the time, and your movie was in our pipeline for digital stuff. So at, in my department, I did the sound design for all of the like big major websites that weren't outsourced to other companies. So Virginity Hit was a Sony movie. So we, so I did the sound design for the, the website, which means I watched the Virginity Hit too many times. <laughs> I, I'm amazed. So I've now started uh, Twitch streaming and I get people coming in asking about the virginity hit. And I go, how, like, why is it, why did anybody see the virginity hit? <laughs> well, it was I fun think... to do, but it's just, it was the worst box office opening of 2010. We hold that record. Congratulations. <laughs> it was, it, no one can take that from you, Matt. No, no one can take that amazing that I had something else in my pipeline. And that was the Nickelodeon <laughs> show. It is, I, I 
would have faded into obscurity immediately. Well, dude, you like had have this look, and you, at the time you were just this like cute little nerdy kid, sure. and you really had that kind of like look that that Innocent. you just corruptible right corruptible yeah, yeah uh but but that when goofy you saw, sidekick perhaps yeah mm-hmm. but you know like it. when you see someone and you're like when they're a kid in a movie and you're like oh that kid's gonna like go places like you know like i really felt that way seeing you and zach as a matter yeah. of fact like Steve, you how guys, many times have you, you seen virginity hit dude way <laughs> Too many. Give me a number. Times. Give me a number. Give me a ballpark. Well, what the crazy of- part is, is I I watched like way early cuts too. Like they showed us like work prints and shit because my job was to take sound bites from the movie and then use them in the website places. Like when you'd click on like the oh. trailer, you'd oh, hear I- like, "Let's go, man." Like wish, is this, the website's not up anymore, is it? No, I don't think no. I ever visited it. They took it down, it but it had like sound bites and shit. And so most certainly I pulled clips of you saying shit and listened to your voice over and over again back in the day. But wow. um, it's such a trip to me that like Sounds years like later, I ended up meeting you and Zach yeah. basically at the same party, I think. Thank and God then- I'm not a dick. Like, <laughs> imagine like you watch the movie, you see me at a party, and I'm like, yeah, what is the what a <laughs> that happens sometimes? Oh, totally. <laughs> not for totally. me, I'm, you know. Right, right. You would never. No. But um, and, but you're you're a very congenial and you know gregarious guy, so it's easy to like you. Oh, thank you, sweet angel. But that's that's which brings me to like our when we became friends because it was a trip for me because I worked on the movie, and it's not like you know I worked on a lot of movies back then humble brag at sony pictures and it was really cool um but it's not like the virginity hit was like in my top whatever like it's not yeah. like a, one of my favorite movies or whatever <laughs> but i would be i'd be weirded out if it was one of yeah favorite yeah favorite exactly movies. exactly <laughs> but um did it, did it make you say. feel like you'd really yeah, you'd really sure. arrived in hollywood when one of your acting idols matt Bennett, was, <laughs> <laughs> was giving you the time of day yeah <laughs> man i mean that's the one i'm gonna tell my grandkids i think okay. someday <laughs> you mean vice president President Matt <laughs> <laughs> wasn't he canceled? No, um, but yeah, like, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Dude, but nothing we... makes you nothing makes you appreciate how good a finished movie is, and you don't think about when you're watching it because you, the art is so good that you don't you don't have like uh, radars going off. But when you watch an unfinished movie, like they give you the demo cut where it's like scene unfinished, uh, placeholder audio all of that when you see a movie in that form you will forever appreciate a finished movie on another level because that is a nightmare to watch i wish that i had one of the work prints because my dad was there one day and they put him in the background and cut the scene and he's still it's one of those sad things (laughs) he still brings it up to this day his acting debut it was left on the cutting room floor If I could get him that footage, it would be so funny. You'd be like, that. Dude, you could make some calls. That, Remember that's when archived you sat somewhere. in a chair in a movie 11 years ago? <laughs> you, could do, you could present it like a hologram like, uh, like Kanye did to Kim. With her. Oh, God. <laughs> please, dear God, I want to write my will. Never make me a hologram. Don't make me a hologram, please. Uh, Elliot wants to be a hologram, though. He's talked, he talks about it a lot. Yeah, I, it's my big goal, and I feel like it's the only way to reach immortality. So, <laughs> I, well, I have to admit, I've never seen one of the modern holograms. The ones that I've seen, although I did say I, I saw Hatsune Miku in concert, who's the famous Japanese hologram. Yeah, but it wasn't. I'll, I'll explain that in a second. But the ones that I think of when I think of hologram is like when you're walking a baggage claim at LAX. Oh you know, right, and there's the cutout. The cutout thing. <laughs> that's the re- I like don't do that to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, have, I have to see like the Tupac hologram, and maybe if it's cool. Uh-huh. <laughs> what about and if a... there's a demand? <laughs> yeah. What about like a like <laughs> a CG are... Matt Bennett in a movie like a hundred years from now or something? Ah. Uh... And virginity hit too. Yeah, he, yeah. He ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, so didn't lose it. Um, yeah, like but, that sophomoric, borderline sexist humor that you know <laughs> right, comes right. back in style a hundred years from now. <laughs> right, virginity right. hit is reassessed and discovered to be the masterpiece that it was, and so. They want <laughs> to be Are you terrified of things in the virginity hit that will haunt you in your future career, Matt Bennett? Uh, it's not something I really think about. Good, um, good. That's it, healthy. That's healthy. 
it, you know, it, the movie certainly objectifies women, which is wrong. Uh, yeah. But I don't, it's, it was done before this conversation started, you know, yeah. before it was really mainstream. So. Look, oh, great. Now the vault, now the vulture is going to pick this up. No, all we can do is move forward. And, you know, if it, if somebody wants to have a conversation about it, I'm all down, you know, once again, I started Twitch streaming. So if somebody's like, Hey, that was fucked up in that movie. I'd be like, I agree. You know, I was 17 yeah. and they, they were promising me all of these things. I didn't know that I had a choice. Or right. A choice. Right. An option. Mm-hmm. And if I was now, I wouldn't do it again. But yeah. Good for you, man. That's, that's awesome. That's a great answer. That's a wonderful, like well-rounded, very uh, smart answer. That's very nice. I go that's to very honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, this, guy, this guy goes to therapy. I'm a great therapist. <laughs> yeah. But Matt, I want to talk about how when we met, we kind of connected on a musical level with They Might Be Giants. Yeah! And we super connected on that. And I loved how nerded out we got about it. And then one day, we we saw each other at a They Might Be Giants concert. Right. We just happened to to oh, bump cool. into each other, and then we hung out the whole time. And we played a game where we try to guess what song they were playing as soon as yeah. they started. And like, it, it, there's <laughs> an old TV show that my parents always talk about, where I was like, I can name that song in in two beat. And right. Like, name yeah. that tune. Name that tune. So yeah. we did that, but at a, at a live They Might Be Giants concert. <laughs> it was we, so fun. We were evenly matched. We, I think, yeah, I think we totally were. It was totally a tie. Right, and then there were often times where I'd be like, oh, it's this, and you'd go like, no, 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 it's this. And then we'd both be wrong. And then we'd just start okay. making out, and then we fell in love, and then we got <laughs> married. Just collapsed mm. to the ground, <laughs> a writhing mass. But, Everybody was dancing, so they didn't know. <laughs> it didn't matter. Like and beautiful waves of sound washing over us. <laughs> and nothing mattered, nothing mattered at all. <laughs> we but, continued to try to name that tune, but we just kept naming our whispering, passion. Whispering, <laughs> um, each other's <laughs> <laughs> but like the There's music <laughs> <laughs> from the Doctor Worm. Uh, but you, you've always, I've always loved your um, musical taste and your, because um, you've introduced so many amazing bands and music to me, and you make music. Yes, Ooh. and you've released music, and you're. I feel like you're known for your music in a lot of ways too. Yeah. So we did. There were two songs that I performed on Victorious that I still get requests. People are they love the songs. One is about playing with broken glass, and people love that right song. On. And the other one is a love song I wrote and I sing to Ariana's character Cat on the show called "I Think You're Swell." So they love those songs. Uh, and it's, it's crazy because I get side residuals for those two tracks. You get the and, music oh, residuals, yeah. yeah it's pretty crazy. Nice. Show us your checks, Matt. Show us the checks. <laughs> Hold on a second. He just pulls yeah. a big check. Dude, <laughs> we're going to need to see some papers. Like a lot of, yeah. <laughs> like what, 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 what's that? Uh, a lot the of the publish, like, publisher's clearing house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's like one of those industry hacks that people do. Because wasn't it like Brian Cranston on Malcolm in the Middle? His character would always like, improv like songs he'd be singing songs so he got into the songwriters union because he was doing that and they were using him and he gets like he got mad residual off of all of these little songs that he made up on the fly on the show that's the hack that's the actor hack hack. music it 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 pays so much more than acting wow your sinks so my um one of my friends the guy who did all of the music for victorious and all a, a whole bunch of live action nickelodeon shows i mean he wins awards because of it and he it's He's just stacked. It's crazy. The, yeah, it's like the, the behind the scenes way to just totally succeed. It's like if you worked on Teen Titans Go, you're probably rolling in it because all they did was make music on that show. Wow. My, uh, but you're, I love your, what you've been doing with TikTok with your music review. You're the only one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you but, have to tell everybody what you're doing because Joe oh, and Elliot don't know what this is. Yes, yeah, so I, I get. I don't know much about Joe and Elliot either. I'd love to hear about them at a certain point. I didn't Absolutely realize this not. was going to be Matt Bennett no, hour, but- um, You're our guest. We talk all the fucking time. I know right. People I are bored bad. of our I, shit. I, Steve asked me at like 10 o'clock this morning, do you want to be on the podcast for two hours? I'm like, okay, sounds good. <laughs> I, no I, I, I don't know what, we're, what we were going to be talking about, what the topic was. If you guys had me come on and talk about soybean futures, I would have like, I would have been like, all right, I guess that's what this podcast is. Great, because we have a lot to say about soybean. <laughs> good. We'll begin shortly. Uh, but so I started this on TikTok. Uh, I wanted to 
you know, I watch people like the needle drop, like Anthony Fantano, who's a big music critic online. I'm like, I could do that. Bald like, guy. Bald, bald guy, yes. And so I started review, I started reviewing albums in 60 second chunks. And um, what I didn't realize is kids are rabid and vicious when it comes to who they like. And I don't do any, like it's constructive criticism. So I, I gave good, I give, I've only given two negative reviews. Uh, one was for Blackpink who are the number one largest Ooh, K-pop. Oh, yeah, group. watch out, dude. Ooh. Yeah, tell me about it. And the other one is uh, Bad Bunny, <laughs> who had the number one album in the world. It's the first Spanish language album. And I just thought it was a little, I thought the beats weren't that uh, uh, creative. I thought it wasn't I was for you. overwhelmed. And yeah. oh man, the top, <laughs> I learned the phrase ratioed. Do you know what ratioed yeah. is? Dude, I just learned yeah. this too. It's a great they phrase. Were, they great were, uh, uh, they ratioed me to hell. <laughs> For so, those uh, who don't know yeah. what ratio means, ratio means that your like to dislike uh, ratio is so in favor of just the comments go, it's so against all of the quantity of the comments that are hating the person. Yeah. That's what's called ratio. So even oh. if you get a bunch of likes, if you get a bunch of comments or a bunch of feedback that is lambasting you, it basically means you've been ratioed. You can see it on Twitter. You can see it on yeah. other So my tweet about the Blackpink album review has 1,000 likes and 6,000 comments. That's a ratio. That's, that's ratio. And that's a ratio. That's what we call ratio. And all I said, like, I'm a Black, I like Blackpink. I just said that this, the album is seven songs long and there were like two singles and the rest kind of felt like filler and stuff they'd done before. Not not good. Just to, you know, not today. You know, hang yes. up the hat. <laughs> move from Los Angeles. Move to the to the Alps. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Burn but, your internet connection. Yeah. Stay on Twitch. <laughs> the least like yeah. the least criticizing version of being critical is all you said, and you still got destroyed. It's like <laughs> it doesn't feel like an album. Yeah. <laughs> I said I like them. It's just you know here's it just didn't feel. Like it's their first album, it should have been more. People were waiting for a long time. No, couldn't. Well, you're Dead. doing critical thinking. You're, you're we're talking thinking critically ghost. about what you're listening to, and you're sharing honest yeah. critiques, even if they're very nice. And people, I think, a lot of times can't handle the idea of being able to like something, but not particularly like the one product that that person's putting out. I think you're a brave person, Matt, and I think you need to stick with it. But uh, you know, I'm getting something out of it as well. I, I thank you for that. I, Absolutely. I, I don't listen to, I'm a They Might Be Giants fan. I don't really listen to what's happening on the radio right now. So this has forced me to kind of reassess everything. And so I listened to Megan The Stallion's album. I liked it. Yeah. I gave it a positive review. It was really fun. I listened to Ty Dolla Sign's album. I liked it. I gave it a positive review. <laughs> you know, it's it, the only songs that I know that are popular right now are the songs that they give you in Fortnite. <laughs> Uh, what's the other songs that they do? It's that, like, I'm a rat. Right, right foot up. Uh, <laughs> left foot up. Right foot up. <laughs> That's my gateway into youth culture right now. Joe's they being just, trigger, triggered. They just dropped Gundam style, which I thought was really Dude. weird. Yeah. And it's traversal. Almost 10 years on. And it's yeah. universal, which means you could do it and you can walk while you do it. So like me and Mike the other day were just like walking and not even playing the game. And we're just doing Gangnam style for like <laughs> as long as we possibly can. It's just, you know, come on. I was going to say it's weird, but you think about what they're resurrecting, like Predator. When yeah. When was the last time yeah. they made a Predator movie? Yeah. When was the last, yeah. like now you can download the Terminator skin. It's right. Like, well, and it's it's reinvigorating those IPs too because my my son's just like dad. When are you going to let me watch Terminator Two and Predator? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> now let's do it now. <laughs> How old Dude. is he? He's seven, so he's he's not quite Predator age, but he's I think maybe T two is handleable. He can handle that. T two yeah. is so good. T two yeah. is just a masterpiece. Perfect, perfect movie. Yeah, I think. Did you guys hear that GI Joe is coming to uh <laughs> yeah. to Fortnite? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get some GI Joe guys. I think they should do what they did with the Marvel season on that game and do uh, just do like an '80s IP, kind of mm. like they're doing Bounty Hunters now. But what if they did like you're getting the GI Joes, you're getting like Transformers, you're getting all these like obscure mm. '80s cartoon characters coming in? What if there was like an area called like Shermer Hills or something, and it was like a John Hughes like 
you have like <laughs> the the school from the breakfast club or something <laughs> well, it's so marvel's now owned by disney so yeah. imagine they open up the disney vaults and it's Ugh. like you know goofy running around or like, i would love like obscure like oliver and company character <laughs> yeah yeah the silver age get the silver age in there <laughs> I want over the hedge or what was the or what was the one? Wouldn't it, wouldn't like a two like upright two legged Pumba with a fucking assault? Yeah, rifle? dude. Yeah. It, would, it would kind of be like a Second Life or what? Like in VR, you know, you see, VR chat. Yeah, with like Kermit the Frog running around and twerking. Yeah, I, dude, they've got me, man. I don't know what to say. They've really hooked me. And Joe has kids, so oh, they're hooked. We run around as a family and get uh, victory royales together. It's great. But does it's Elliot he- play? No, I'm trying to get him to play, but he's he's. he's it's a tr- lot. I, I, it's I, a lot. I, 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 so I, I, you guys are both here in Los Angeles, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, I got invited first to a Fortnite party. There was like a party that they were throwing at I, this one. I think the first one was down by the Olympic Coliseum. The old Coliseum. Uh-huh. And I was I was walking around being like Fortnite, Fortnite. Oh, everybody likes Fortnite. Oh. Uh, but I went home and I downloaded it and I was like, I, I really don't vibe with this. But there's something that stuck. Because then I went and I watched Ninja's videos and he's so good at the game. Yeah. It's like, Stupid. I was like, this kind of seems kind of fun. I get now why they want to build. And it just it hooked me. So and then by the time I went to the next Fortnite party, it just it had changed my life and I I'm now I'm level 152 or oh shit <laughs> what I start Wait. my morning with Fortnite I like I wouldn't do be you, doing this if it wasn't for the pandemic but do you crank yeah. 90s do you guys crank 90s do you know what I'm talking about yeah build build the 90 degree like little my, that's how Jackson talks now he goes dad I'm check it out I'm cranking 90s and I'm like you're doing it. what excuse me <laughs> go to your room man <laughs> is it is it the, it's the, super sweaty <laughs> oh is he is he a sweat or whatever he's yeah. not that yet no 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 no. he's not that yet but yeah cranking 90s is just building really fast which seems like wizard shit to me by the way it's I'm just not that it's, fast well i'm I, insane. On a ps4 controller so i don't someone was telling me that and this might be like old men trying to reach into the zeitgeist no, and You're figure young it out man steve stop it well you, you know babe, com- comparatively yourself. i guess while we have our young guest here matt bennett but um <laughs> apparently behind, but okay <laughs> Apparently there's these uh, there's these things that you can connect to your controller and then it connects to your it's like a it's like a bypass between the controller and the system and it allows you to like press one button and it'll build like an entire that is thing cheating. for you. Yeah, that's yeah. Cheating. That's yeah. Cheating. And but but what I what I'm saying is is that that exists and I didn't even know that existed. But it kind of makes sense when you see these people building these like fucking, you know, castles essentially in the game. In like seconds. It's stupid. in seconds. Yeah. But I know there's people that are just really good at it, like PC players. But but apparently there's like things where it just automatically builds you these giant fucking things. It's just like it's blowing my mind. And keep in mind that just because they can build really fast doesn't mean you can't win. You know, you can, you can go, you, you can uh, undermine them. Ooh. You can sneak under, sneak around, hide. You know, uh, there's so many ways around that situation. And that's what I like about the game. You can turn the system off. It's great. Uh, words <laughs> to li- you, could, you could look out the window. Go outside even. <laughs> words Read to live by, by Matt Bennett, guys. We'll be right back. Hey there, welcome to the ad portion of this uh, episode of the Valley Cast. This uh, ad portion is a little different than the majority of them. I'm not here to tell you about anything to do with micromodal fabric or how to straighten your teeth or how to look good when you go out in the convenient price. I'm not here to tell you how to ship things if you own a small business, nor am I telling you how to get nutrients into your body. Instead, I'm telling you about something that's really beautiful, guys. It's called the Movie Movie Game, and it's available right now for pre-order. There's a link in the description. If you haven't gotten it yet, they'll just send you to the Kickstarter, which is linked up now to our pre-order package, or you can go to bit.ly.com slash movie movie game if you would like to do it on your own time and you don't want to have to click hyperlinks. I get it. We also have pins available that combine some of the most fun prompts from the game into things that you can hold physically and they just make you smile and they're really cool and clever and I'm excited about them. And there's a link to that in the description as well or you can go to dftba.com and search for The Valley Book and you'll find it there as well. And it's a perfect game to play while you listen to Weezer's new album in the background. I know I'm not supposed to just plug random bands that I like, but 
here we are. No one can stop me. But movie, movie game is the headline here. So if you would like to pre-order, it helps us out because it helps tell us how many um, things we're gonna order, how much we're gonna have in excess, which helps us figure it out as a business. You get it. Uh, and you can check out the description for all the links that I just previously mentioned. But now let's get back to the show so you can see Matt Bennett and I bond over Weezer. See you soon. <laughs> Just kidding. I didn't. I just, no, that's perfect because we'll do ads. Okay. Perfect. No, I, that was oh, nothing. I was I fucking there were ads. No, it was a joke. Ads, but it worked out perfect. <laughs> but we're now we're back from that joke. Okay. I want to. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna transition us real quick because before we were doing the podcast, we were talking about Tim Burton and oh, how yeah. his first how his first three movies were just like knocked out of the park. It was. Uh, um, second one was Beetlejuice. It was Beetlejuice. It was Pee-wee, Pee-wee Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and then Batman. I Batman. Think. And I was blown away. I was like, what the hell? This guy's insane. And then Matt was like, I got some Tim Burton trivia, and I yeah. got to hear it. Um, so are you guys Martin Scorsese fans? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Dude, sure. Have you ever yeah. seen the movie After Hours? Absolutely not. No. no. That is my not only my favorite Martin Scorsese movie, that's my favorite movie of all time. Oh, shit. Griffin oh. Dunn, Rosanna Arquette. It's it's this crazy story about a uh, you know a lonely guy in New York who meets a girl at a diner. Um, she invites him back to her apartment, and it's the the cab ride downtown is them descending into hell, and it's just following him. It's got a great uh, a oh. supporting cast. Terry Gar is in it. Ooh. Uh, uh, Catherine O'Hara. Oh my uh, God. Heard. Um, who, what year Scorsese is this? Why eighty five maybe? Why is this not on eighty five or eighty six? Okay. Um, but so what happened was they gave the script to Martin Scorsese. He's like, I really like this. I'm trying to get this other movie, Last Temptation of Christ, made. So I'm going to walk away. So they gave it to a new young director who was going to direct it. Last Temptation fell through for the, the first time. Mm-hmm. And Martin Scorsese is like, whatever happened to that After Hours script? And they go, oh, we gave it to this new director. And he goes, oh, that's fine. It'll be okay. The producers went to the new director and go, hey, funny story. Martin Scorsese is interested in directing this again. And the director said, it, he's Martin Scorsese, give it to him. Whoa. That director was Tim Burton. So this, oh. so if you go and watch After Hours, it's Martin Scorsese directing a Tim Burton movie. Wow. It's phenomenal. Whoa. And like, every like 20 minutes, mind, Matt there's a new twist that that adds an added dimension to it. I've never Damn. talked about my love for this movie. I have I have a printed out version of the script right here. What <laughs> the fuck? It's called After Hours? Yeah. Wow, Folks, if you're just listening, right here. Matt's not joking. He does have a physical copy <laughs> of the script of the movie he's that, referencing. That he had that I don't think a, he was prepared for it. Pretty no, cool. He wasn't prepared. It was an arm's length of where he's <laughs> Yeah, yeah the but still there. Right here. Wow, Matt. Well, now that's you're bragging. Awesome. It's <laughs> my book, my bookshelf. Now you're bragging. Yeah, you're bragging. I, I paid bragging. fifteen dollars. There's, you know, that uh, store on Hollywood Boulevard that sells script. They like print out a script for you. Yeah. Sure. I went in. I'm like, do you have after hours? And he goes, I don't, like. He had to like blow dust off of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was asked for this ever. I'm like, can Big I have leather bound it? book? Oh no, it's just it's. Oh, his leather bound book. But yeah, his leather bound. Like, yeah, I was imagining. Look at that. Dude. Wait. So when you're watching it, are you going like, oh yeah, that that right there is a Tim Burton moment definitely directed by martin scorsese absolutely well just wow. the way that it's shot it's all nighttime in uh like in downtown los angeles or downtown los angeles, downtown new york in the village w- you know in the middle of the 80s so it's dead there's nothing there it's just lofts for artists and stuff and there's a there's a couple of scenes that take place at a punk club and the people there are like bondage freaks and it kind wow. of feels tim burton cool there's a lot of cool wow. stuff Dude, speaking of Tim Burton and scripts, I just stumbled upon the like often thought was just like a legend script called Beetlejuice in Love. Uh, supposed to be the sequel. Because wasn't there was the Beetlejuice sequel, in right? Hawaii or something? There was Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, which is yeah. a script you can find if you Google it. But then there was one that had always been talked about that people were like, we heard of it. It's It exists, but nobody has it. And it's... Beetlejuice in love. <laughs> Is it, can you have it? Or you and I have it? it. Yeah, I have you it. You have it. Have I you have read the it? script. I found it. I have not read it. And I'm trying to think of something fun to do in the vein of like a Jason Reitman oh, like yeah. script read kind of thing. Maybe we could do like a Twitch show or something where we like read scripts that like were lost that we found with like fun comedians or something like that. Yeah. But um I would love to do that. I have a couple of weird, obscure scripts. Really? Okay, well, let's connect. 
I have a first draft of Back to the Future 1 and Back to the Future 2. Dude, I found the, the first draft of Back to the Future 2. It's where they go to the 70s. I haven't but, read it yet, but I just downloaded it. Yeah. Whoa. Hell yeah. yeah. And there, what's the other cool script that I have? Oh, um, I was reading the Sprockets script. You know, uh, the Mike, oh, Myers from, uh, Mike Myers. Yeah. They were going to make a full movie out of Sprockets. Could you imagine? I think it was <laughs> I, and if I'm not mistaken, I think him and Phil Hartman wrote it. Wow. Possible. Damn, I want to read that fucking script on Twitch with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> we had we got to get Flula to do, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Was uh, Dieter. Dieter, that's right, Dieter. <laughs> Was the Beetlejuice Goes to Hawaii script bad? Yeah. Oh, it really is. Okay, yeah, so it's I mean, just I not good. I mean, I didn't read it, but notoriously it's not good, yeah. Was it a Tim Burton joint? Like, did he write it? No, but oh, okay. he also didn't write Beetlejuice either. Someone right. else did. Great, great movie. God dang. So yeah, does Tim Burton write his own script? That's no. Good. No, because no. he didn't. He didn't write Pee Wee's Big Adventure. No, nope. that was Paul Rubens and Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman, yeah. Wow, just straight up a visionary. Is yeah, what they would say. Hmm. Yeah, uh, even, and uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. He didn't even. Nope. He, I think he wrote the is book, he... and that's why they call it Tim Burton's Nightmare Before Christmas. Right, because he created a lot of the designs. And yeah, the it was the art, like, like as the characters he was creating for a long yeah. time. Is he doing, is he still doing, what is he doing? What's I mean, Big doing? Eyes, Big Eyes 2. I never no, saw Big is. Eyes. I never Maybe saw either. it. Did you guys see it? Oh, it looks no. weird. Yeah, it looks weird. Their eyes are too big. He just did the <laughs> Alice in Wonderland, and those were bad. Yeah. Made oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big yeah. Fish is pretty boring. That was a boring movie. I think Which he's one? told all the stories. He's mm. he. I think he's Dark told. Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows. Fuck! I forgot all about that movie. I'm People slightly. Like I'm movie. slightly interested in late career Johnny Depp, like Mordecai. Mordecai. Yeah. <laughs> what Johnny? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Are you doing, Johnny? Or like the Kevin Smith movies, where he's like that weird awesome. Canadian character. Yeah. yeah. That's I think he's just odd. kind of checking off all the directors he hasn't worked with yet. Right, <laughs> right, right. Well, I guess Kevin Smith. Uh, well, listen, Matt, if you're not to go back to this previous conversation, but if you do end up doing music reviews today, Weezer dropped their newest album. I myself oh. am a Weezer fan. Yes, I've listened to it a their, number of times. It is the best album they put out in a decade. Oh, damn. Are you for real? Are you for real right now? You actually have listened to it? Yes, a number of times. Oh, my, fr my friend, Matt, I love me. you. <laughs> sent me a rough of it uh, maybe two months ago and so i've just been i had it on you're the only person i've ever met who's really a yeah. rough version uh-huh cool. okay human and you like the it? album okay I, guys I this it. is Where matt and elliot's awesome. meet cute just let's just <laughs> joe let's yeah, just sit like back. i'm like oh, trying to be cool about it like, it's so so cool, so and sad. <laughs> oh well, I, heard, I was like oh, okay yeah. that's but that was the single that they put out um yeah I'm trying to think of the others um alu gobi Oh, uh, uh, I also like what's Grapes of Wrath. Grapes of Wrath. Yeah, uh, really uh, good. Grapes of Wrath. Uh, yeah. It drift off to oblivion. Da, da, da. Oh, so good. Dude, right, this I'm gonna play, really really I want to play a game with you guys real quick in regards to this album because I'm looking at it. Yeah. How long is the shortest track on the album? Oh, 58 seconds or something. Is that 24, right? 24 seconds. <laughs> Is it? I haven't listened to the whole thing yet. It came out today, so I've 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 not uh, dived in as much as I want. And so then I'm there's another track. Like it, Mirror image is one minute and seventeen seconds. So Mirror image is really good. Here's Mirror the funny thing. Also, one. I reached out. They I reached out to a local record store because there are indie exclusive vinyl colorways, and I asked if they had okay, uh, human. And so, oh, nice. Yeah. He said I, he ordered a bunch, <laughs> but he hasn't got it in yet. So, oh, I really enjoy it. I'm Dude. excited to dive more into it. I, I saw that it was today. I'm like saving it for later because I want to be able to like focus on it. But uh, yeah, I mean, they 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 did a whole, they're just, such, I lo what I love about them is they're just such a weird, Rivers is a weird person and he just does whatever he wants. And to do a all orchestra album right before, technically before, but like releasing it before doing the heavy metal album. Mm -hmm. And I guess next year they're planning on doing four albums but each one is going to be in line with the season. So it's going to be like a spring album, a winter album, a summer album. And like the winter album is going to be more like Elliot Smith style. So I'm pretty stoked Ooh. about it. And it, basically he's just learned that he likes to make music in quarantine. And yeah. uh, I'm very excited. So, Are you a Songs from the Black Hole fan? 
Absolutely. Well, oh my God, st- shut your mouth, Matt. Yes, of course. I think <laughs> Glass is- Off is one. Of- <laughs> Glass Off is, I think, one of the catchiest <laughs> songs I've ever heard in my life. I listen to it all the time. Long time, Sunshine. Where did you go? Oh, Get back. He's gonna go grab the script of the album. He's gonna go grab the script. Just <laughs> <laughs> Rivers Como into the. You know show. Blast Off? If you play Blast Off, that's such a good song. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I can. Oh my goodness. Blast off the dude yep. Here uh, we go. Yep. Oh my goodness. Ooh, Elliot's a- gonna get pregnant live on the podcast. I'm gonna get Exclusive. pregnant live on the podcast. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's uh, that's Beverly Hills. Maybe it's the same song. No, hold, let me- <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, that was, that was Beverly Hills for sure. Uh, I'm gonna look up the tab just so I can remember. Yeah, so can it's such a catchy song, and the but- robot noises and everything. The robot voices. <laughs> Yep. So you, so you, Matt, you realize that you've raised the bar very high for this album. You've heard that Matt or that Elliot hasn't listened to this yet. <laughs> Where's my lighter? Okay, sorry. Um, so good. Thank you. That was wonderful. But uh, so for everybody who doesn't know, after the Blue Album, Rivers was working on an opera, like a rock opera called Songs from the Black Hole, uh, while he was going to Harvard. And it was weird and kind of, it fell through, but since, uh, since they've released a, a bunch more albums, they've gone and re- re-released some of the songs on demo albums and on Rivers Alone compilations, and people online have recreated what it could have sounded like. And there are a bunch Dude. of bootlegs that are really good. That's cool. Are you familiar with what happened like three weeks ago with uh, Rivers, what he did? Yeah, so Rivers uh, dumped hours upon hours. Almost like when yeah. Radiohead, when all the OK Computer sessions dropped. Yeah. Um, they did, Rivers just put up catalogs of every demo. Yeah. He's ever oh, that's heard. right, yeah. Because he was wanting to learn web programming because oh, yeah. he just decided to learn something in quarantine. And so he set wasn't up he, a little really basic website and, uh, and a, sold a it to people for like nine bucks. Yeah, was he, he was taking a, a class, yeah. A college course? Wow, yeah. Matt, that's so crazy. I've never talked to someone who knows the same amount as me <laughs> Dude, about this music, is how, so I don't know really? what to say. I'm like, I'm like bewildered. This is how we connected <laughs> on They Might Be Giants. It's like exactly how. Matt's just like, a it's, little music being. It's a bummer too. So I, I not to be a bummer about this. Um, somebody got into my car and stole my CD binder. Oh. Um, and the and the only CD I had in my car was the full deluxe edition of the Blue Album. <laughs> and they took yeah. it. And I'm like, no! I just I went to the uh, CD store and they had it. And I'm like, I'm buying this. And yeah, so I gotta go and read <laughs> with the sleeve uh, with this opaque yeah. sleeve, half sleeve exactly. on it. Yeah, yeah it was wonderful. Just, so, uh, so um, uh, you guys seem to to be connecting on similar kind of like uh, wavelengths as far as like the the albums you like, the Weezer albums you like, or the Rivers projects you like. What what's like, Matt? What's your favorite Rivers thing? And then Elliot, what's your favorite Rivers or Weezer thing? And then maybe maybe we'll find you know where you guys align on the new album. You know, maybe maybe we could figure that out. Well, there's eras, you know. Yeah. There's a uh, blue album and Pinkerton. That's the er- that's the Matt Sharp era, you know. So Matt Sharp was their bassist, who really a lot of people would argue gives it that extra kick. And when he left, is when they started kind of courting mainstream pop appeal with songs like Island in the Sun, which going is into Matt the song. Green album. Yeah. Going, yeah, Green album, and I love Maladrot. I'm a Maladrot apologist. Um, they, it's a little bit heavier. That has a uh, um, keep fishing on it. The one, the music video they did with the Muppets. Mm-hmm. Take Control, Burnt Jam, American I love Gigolo. Take Control. I love so much. Um, I actually have it on vinyl. Uh, so that's the other. So I, <laughs> one of the things I collect. I vinyl. love you. Is it okay to say I love you? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, I just like music, man. I love you too. Uh, do you like the? Thank you. Do you like the White Album? Are you a White Album fan? I love Endless Bummer. Hey. It, it, it. I have a friend who yeah. loves the White Album. I'm a little bit like, I was a little bit out of love with Weezer until this new one, until OK Human. And good. Now, like, back on the train. It's really good. It's really, really good. Welcome back. Yeah, I love White Album myself. I do like, uh, I never heard it pronounced Maladroit, but I like that. I always thought it was Maladroit, so I'm learning something. Is it? Very no. nice. But make never believe. Never had to say it out loud. 
make believe not yeah i mean they've just been courting like commercial success for a very long time in very weird ways what about the red album because i'm a big fan yeah. of greatest man that ever okay great All when right, that came good. out i was yeah. into it uh but it came off the heels i think what what came first hurley came before that and ratitude uh, Hurley and Ratitude came right after Red Album. Okay, special. So the, too many. There's off. too many albums. Too many albums. <laughs> a lot of albums. I fell no, off. No, that's a good amount of albums. With like the Memories song from Jackass Three. Yeah. I like, kind of just fell off with that, yeah. and then um, I, I think I did listen to Everything Will Be All Right because of the Rick Ocasek production. Yeah. Who mm-hmm. I love. By the way, if you like Rick Ocasek producing, check out Do the Collapse by Guided by Voices. That album is phenomenal. It almost yeah. sounds. I, if you like Variety Guided by Voices. Yeah, it kind of sounds maybe a little bit Weezer-ish because Rick, you know, had his fingers in it, but it's... Guided dude, by you're... voices. And Matt yes. Bennett is... The Do the qu- collapse. Matt Bennett is like the quintessential like record store guy. Like yeah. he's a guy where he knows his music. He has good recommendations. And trust me, Elliot, when you look this up, you're probably going to fall in love with whatever this is. Wait, I, I want to show you guys. I want to show you something good cool. At this. This, this is, is what like, Matt does. He, he's I like, oh, you like, like this? You'll like this. And then you're like, That's oh, my this is incredible. <laughs> yeah, we're my in algorithm. Yeah, high fidelity exactly. right now. Yeah, we're, in the, we're in the record shop right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with Matt yeah. in high fidelity. <laughs> Jack Black yeah. about to sing some soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, when I, I, I traveled to Japan a lot, like before the pandemic, and their record collecting is insane. So this is original pressing. Blue oh, album, nice, nice. And you can tell it's original because you see their legs apparently on all vinyl pressings afterwards. Cuts off. Up. Whoa. Original Maladroit. Oh. Can't quite be able to hold in front of you a little bit. Let's there see. it is. Ooh, there I is. love that album original. cover, man. That's such a fun album Here's cover. Here's the best one. Original Pinkerton on vinyl. Beautiful. Ooh. With uh, a little sticker that says featuring El Scorcho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Big and then also of the original album. Ween. I don't know if you like Ween, but Ween. I did. Yeah, right I like up Ween, there. of course. And it was right up there, so. Nice. Oh, man. That's Dude, wonderful. Look, I just heard a Ween song for the first time where he's basically thanking someone for the lovely party they got invited to. Your party. Yeah. Of, uh, La Cucaracha. Yeah. It's been- <laughs> The chorus is like, my wife and I had a great time. Great time. <laughs> <laughs> you should check out, I mean, like, there's a song called Boys Club, which yeah. it's, it's, I, I don't know if it's like homophobic or not, because it's, it's all about like having fun with your boys at the boys club. You might have sex. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love Voodoo Lady. That's like one of my favorite Amazing. queen songs. And then, uh. Pushing, push the little daisies. Push Isn't the it? little daisies and make them come. Yeah, dude. Oh, I love. I gotta listen to some Ween after this. Have you listened yeah. to White Pepper? No. So after Chocolate Riding and Cheese, down. they decided to be a real band. Like Chocolate and Cheese was the first one where they're. Before it had just been like them with a you know cheap microphone. Was that the that. It's Pat days? Um. Well, they did what pork roll egg and cheese on It's Pat. Oh, so that's yeah, what I it guess was. so. Yeah, I guess so. Um, because that's off of um. Not the pod. What's the one up? I think that's off of Pure Guava. But then um, they did, <laughs> so after, awesome. after Chocolate and Cheese, <laughs> they put out an album called 12 Golden Country Greats, which is an all-country <laughs> album. Yeah, I've heard those. With only, with only 10 songs on it. <laughs> <laughs> but it is just country songs. It's like they... It's- they- and it's so good because they went down to Nashville and they hired like actual like wrecking crew level guys, you yeah, know, the people who've yeah. been on a million albums. Yeah. So it sounds so good, but it's songs like flow free. It's like songs about dead cats and stuff. <laughs> and then they put out an album called White Pepper. I'm which right no, I think, and I'm sorry, maybe they put out the mollusk first, which is also yeah. Great, it, went, I, it went 12 golden country greats in 96 to the mollusk in 97, painting the town brown, a live album in live 1999. Album. <laughs> And then 2000 White Pepper. Which has um, their song, Let Me Lick Your Pussy, which is actually, <laughs> which is like a fan favorite. <laughs> um, uh, I've never heard it. I'm so excited to jump in. Then, so White Pepper is, I tell everybody to start there because it's just an actually good album. Like people are like, oh, Ween, like that band, like Push Little Daisies and everything. I'm like, no, White Pepper. It's The joke is it's their white album meets Sergeant Peppers. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, I'm they, on such a Beatles kick right now too. So this is perfect for me. 
please check it out. I'm I, I'm I I'm so weed. in, dude. But like, it's so funny to suggest their their like attempt at a real album, and then everything just falls the fuck apart after that. If someone like loves it, you know, because oh. you have to really love it to be like go to then go to like Push Little Daisies or Voodoo Lady or whatever, and then be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I, well like when you click with like they have a song called bananas and blow and if that's your sense of humor then you might get with weed like, right right <laughs> but they just do their sense of humor on white pepper in an approachable way so if you, right. if you see that you click with it then you can go back to the early stuff right right like poop ship destroyer and you'll be like <laughs> I'm, I'm ready <laughs> you're like i get it dude okay. um so before we wrap it up I want you and Joe to make some kind of musical connection. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want to force it, but I want to see if there's something you guys can connect on because Joe's music taste is a little bit different than, well, we have similar music tastes, I think, but you know, you're a little bit so, more. Yeah. So my problem, it's not yeah. a problem, but with me, it's like, I just kind of dabble in a little bit of everything and always have. Oh. And it sounds like you, you know, I, I grew up with Weezer, um, Pinkerton and, and Green Album, to the point where we were doing Green Album cover songs in our, in our high school band, like Hash Pipe. <laughs> yeah, still, <laughs> still a great song. Great song. Uh, my my go-to band, my where I would contend the best front man in in history for me is Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl is kind of like my, my my guy. Cool. Um, but then I just like uh, Toadies. Do, do you dig the Toadies? I grew up hey, loving awesome them. Kingdom, I know. Yeah. Yeah, Possum Kingdom's great. Uh, what Tyler else? is that? Ty Tyler's Tyler. one of them as well. So um, it's so it's like the mid to late '90s, but not the new metal scene. Is kind not, of I didn't get too much into new metal. To uh, a lot. Ken Andrews, uh, Blinker the Star, some some. Uh, Ken Andrews and Blinker. Now those I don't even know. Oh, Ken Andrews, great, great, great. So failure. So failure was uh, Ken I've heard Andrews. Of failure original okay. project and then he went off and Absolutely did some no other stuff by himself yeah i had like um it was weird out until i was abort, like 12. Abort, oh weird out oh do you guys want to see something oh let's do it out. let's do it <laughs> yes out. we do <laughs> bring your kids choice award bring your kids choice award bring your kids are you guys like weird owl box sets yeah are, you yeah. got it you got it <laughs> yes wait you gotta oh. hold it hold it in front oh. maybe a little bit there it is body Dude, oh, I really I want, want see it. it. I want it, but I have too much stuff. Wow. I have Look too much that. stuff. It's there every it one of his records. That was the first concert I oh, ever went to. Oh, oh, but do you want yeah. to see something? Please be the Kids Choice Award. He's got to start a show called Do You Want to See Something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love this just blades of grass. <laughs> I want there to be who wants to be a millionaire okay. that playing right now. So this is not just one, <gasps> but two copies of Peter and the Wolf. Oh, fuck. Wow. He did with Wendy Carlos yeah. that I got him to sign. Oh my you God. Son of what did he say really about cool. that? He just kind of looked like, what the fuck? Whoever, because <laughs> dude, I had a cassette of the Peter and the Wolf, Wendy Carlos, because uh, the other side was Carnival of the Animals. Mm -hmm. And is that on there also? Part two. Yes, yeah, part two, exactly. Dude, I wore my tape out. I listened to it anytime I took a shower or a bath or like, I would just listen to it on my tape player and the heat of the bathroom warped the tape. So it was like, you know, the warble you'd hear in a cassette blah, tape. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really tough. I had never even heard it until I got it on vinyl because it's just such a rarity. I love it so much. It's so good. I've been, I've been wanting someone to animate it into like some kind of animated thing. But maybe one yeah. of the Valley Folk audience members. Oh, there you go. Ooh, Come on, animators. Do a bunch of free work. Ellie, we're the same. Uh, Weird Al was my first concert too, 100%. Same. Missoula, yeah. Montana. He, uh, oh, he helped introduce me to, oh, nice. I'm from, uh, I went to UF, so I have a Gainesville connection. Peggy there you Gainesville go. Poet. Mm -hmm. Did you meet him? Uh, yeah. No, but I met his brother. So take that. <laughs> Weird John. Uh, pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Tom Petty's brother. Yeah, yeah. Tom Petty. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the rhymes with Tom, but I don't know. 
John. Bob Petty. Bob Grom. Petty. Yeah, Bob Petty. Grom Petty. <laughs> That's what I said. Um, <laughs> but no, Weird Al, it like introduced me to most music. So I understand. And I think it's a whole generation of people that he did for us. He like, he gave us a little sampling of what was popular before I was into what was popular. It was very nice. Especially realized- with the polkas. Were- the polkas were an introduction polkas, to so yeah. much music to me. Like, oh, what song sure. is that? And then I'd yep. hear it and I'd be like, that's a song Weird Al did in the polka. And it's actually <laughs> right. really good. <laughs> they yep. stole that song from Weird Al. Um, sex by Berlin. I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a man. I'm your lover. I'm, I'm a, a one night stand. I heard that I'm during the pandemic for the first time. I went, oh no. I went, oh, it's, just, it's like touching a weird child memory in me. This is so bizarre. <laughs> the song is so strange too. It's a strange song. But like, um, yeah, I heard the, I, all the polkas. I heard Ghetto Superstar through the, you know, the Weird Al yeah. polka. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I found out recently, or I realized recently, listening to uh, music with Hayden. Hayden, my daughter, she's 13 and she's kind of like on an 80s kick these days because of Stranger Things and kind of the resurgence of pop culture. But she listens to a lot of 80s music now and she loves uh, I Think We're Alone Now. And I was like, you dig that. You need to listen to this clone song. So I, <laughs> so I play her and I think I'm a clone, clone now, now, which is A, brilliant. It's so uh, good. Great parody, but B, go listen to, first go listen to I Think I'm Alone Now and listen to the music, listen to the how it's produced, listen to how it's played, and then listen to I Think I'm a Clone Now. And Weird Al also takes the music to another level. Yeah. He makes, he made the band. song more of a banger. It's amazing. He took and they the do music. it live. Yeah, they're able to switch styles from song to song during the concert live, and you're like, "How are how are you guys so good? Yeah. Like, how do you change your your like?" They're so shifters? musically talented, and so is he, and that's why like that's why he went on that tour with the originals recently, like yeah. um, the self indulgent tour. Did you guys go see that? No, no, I wanted to go to the orchestra when he did the Hollywood Bowl orchestra yeah. show. My my buddy Owen said it wasn't so great. Well, the so I saw the the um self-indulgent tour twice because it was all it was different a, a different set list every night and all rarities and i'm like i have to go oh yeah Damn. had been performing albuquerque live which i was like <laughs> i i swear to the, uh, to this day i believe that every answer you ever need to know about life is contained in the lyrics to albuquerque <laughs> yeah. you need to know. and so i saw him the first night that he performed in la and he didn't play albuquerque and there was a party i was supposed to go to the next night and i go i'm going back to see weird out <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he did it and he did the best thing which is at towards the end of the song you know on the recording he loses track of what the story he's telling <laughs> when he's doing it live he's like instead of just going you know finishing up the song he goes back and does it from the beginning <laughs> <laughs> no i and would so lose I, it i was just hold on i went out of focus uh but yeah i was just my mind was blown but then like halfway th- halfway through me telling it he's like oh, i remember my train of thought but it was still like that immediate like oh my god is he doing <laughs> albuquerque again damn that's, so that's funny. fucking brilliant <laughs> and so the other thing is he would end every show with a cover song and it was different every single night and you can go and listen to those on his website and um i'm a huge elvis costello fan nice and a couple of tours ago if they would mess up on something they would play Radio Radio by Elvis Costello, which is a great track. And that was the first night that I got. Like he played Oh, Radio Radio damn. Radio. Wonderful. And the second one was Girl You Want by Devo. And I love Devo. Holy shit. It was a great experience. Damn. He's a great showman. And the band was insane. Yeah. Highly so recommend. good. Yep. Dude, what a show. What a time. What a story. And what a show we've had with Matt Bennett. Today. Good, that was that nice. I love what you just did. Um, <laughs> Matt, really man, dude, I love you having said you. Said we're gonna talk for two hours. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> no, I said, not. I said an hour. Took your text. <laughs> did you? Yes, but um, I do want to say that you're such a great guy, and even when we play Fortnite. You're so giving and caring of us. You're like, do you have shield? Do you need weapons? Do you need bullets? What yeah. do you need? You're like a good caring friend. And it comes off even in like a dumb video game. And I and I appreciate that about you. And it's what makes you such a special person in so many other ways too. But I appreciate you. And just thank you for being on the show, man. I thank you well, for thank your time. Thank you, man. Thank you for having yeah, it's me. It's been lovely meeting you. And I'm yeah. so happy to have, uh, I know if I, when I see you in person, when the world opens back up, I will immediately dump a bunch of Weezer stuff on you and just see what I you say. That. And I can't wait. But you guys will have a lot to talk person. about. 
because yeah. by the time we get out, there will probably be 17 more Weezer albums. That's true. <laughs> At least help. four. Yeah. I'll be here for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, also come and join us in Fortnite, guys. Yes. And also, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm you coming. must promote. What are you working on? Where do you want people to you see? Must you promote. must promote. You must promote. Must. Uh, yeah. So currently, I mean, the, the industry is slowly thawing because of, you know, post pandemic. But in the meantime, I'm on Twitch. Uh, right now it's M-O-T-T-B-O-N-N-O-T-T. It's my name with the vowels changed to O's. And uh, yeah, just follow me. I'm <laughs> at Matt Bennett on pretty much everything else. So you can uh, get updates there. I love oh, it. and I have a new uh, EP out called If Not Whenever. That's on Twitter. Oh, look at that. Right That's now. awesome, dude. Um, thank you so much, my friend. You're a special person. And I appreciate your time and being here. And we'd love to have you back, too. I would, I would love to come back. Yeah. I, just love, I love We've you. only we just started. Time. What a blast that was. And we're going to get this dude enough. on Movie Movie Game is what we're going to get him Dude, on. Movie See if his Movie Movie knowledge you gotta is do as good one, as his music. Do one with him really quick. Yeah, let's oh, do boy. it. Okay, let me bring up from the, the doc. Guys, we've also, got a doc. Also, <laughs> um, I think Matt and I are going to stream Fortnite sometimes too. Like, I don't know when this will, this goes up Monday or Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but, but we'll be streaming sometimes some Fortnite together. Which does your fun. audience like Fortnite? Because mine doesn't. You know, they, I don't think they really care what we do as long as we're like joking around. Which they're so sweet, and I love that about them. Um, but yeah, most people are like, most people don't really want to see Fortnite. <laughs> I think it's more fun to play than it is to watch other. Exactly. People. But so get... we're doing this mode called Queen's Gambit, which my <laughs> friends made up. Where uh, what we do is we dress in the darkest clothes we can and find a taxi cab because the windows are the darkest and we just sit in it and wa- and don't move. Nobody breaks a window and we just watch. So it's kind of like a stream of Fortnite while you're in Fortnite. And it's so funny because sometimes people will run by the car and it's just, it's oh, a great time. Sometimes they get in and start driving and then realize that there's a full party <laughs> in the car with them. <laughs> oh my God. I love no, that. I recommend so it. I and want to do also that. Nature Boys, which is where we hide in trash cans the entire game. But that's Nature Boys. Not as, you know, as entertaining. Okay, you, but here's the idea. thing. Every mm-hmm. Friday, we have our big Friday night night, which is our big PVP 16 person lobby where we try to get as many people in as we possibly can to kill each other in Fortnite okay. and have a great time. You're invited always. And cool. yeah, I usually I've been streaming Tuesdays from five to late and Fridays from five to late. Wonderful. So yeah, maybe we'll we'll intersect Big Friday night night with some streaming funds. But I've got to try all this shit out. It's so fun. Anyway, Joe, go for it. I'll give you two. I'll give you one that's a funny one, and the one's a little bit more of a, a niche movie. All right, is here's the first a trivia one. question or yes. Okay, so this is okay. movie movie game. I take a synopsis of a movie and I slam it with a synopsis of a second movie, and you got to give me the slam together title of the two movies okay so for example give, you want to give an example first so yeah i'll give a you freebie. Yeah, yeah, yeah i'll give here's a freebie anybody can answer the only thing separating a terrified mother and son from the vicious slobbery dog jaws of a murderous but very ill pooch are the doors of their ford pinto and the sweet punk tracks from an archie comics inspired all-female rock band uh Cujo and the Pussycats. Yeah, okay, you got wait, it. You got wait, wait, it. wait, wait. Cujo Z and the Pussycats. And the Pussycats. Oh, movie that? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cujo Z and the Pussycats. Yeah, every single sound. Important note, Steve. Important note. By the yes. way, have you seen Josie and the Pussycats 2000, from 2000? I've never seen it. I never oh, seen my God. It's so I know. Movie. It's so good. The I hear it's so incredible. Good. I'm just, I'm a huge Fountains of Wayne fan. And one oh, of the songs God. by Adam R- Schlesinger. R.I.P. Yes, incredible, incredible uh, musician and the soundtrack is so good so that song and then the closing song is written by Adam Duritz of the Counting Crows <laughs> and I wow. it is my holy grail I have to find a demo recording of him singing it because you listen to it and I could I picture his voice singing it it's, it's so Duritzy. I love that. I love that anyway sorry go ahead it's just dripping in Duritz uh, <laughs> all right Duritz last you wow. get it. You're already a pro at it, I can tell. Uh, your mother sucks cocks in hell. And also as a showgirl masquerading as a nun to avoid the ill pursuit of the mob. Exorcist act. There you go. You're too good. You're too good. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, damn. Wait, give him a really hard one then. <laughs> okay, really okay. An eight-legged South American stowaway did the nasty with one of the locals. And now this small town's only hope is John Goodman and a military plan to parachute a goddamn elephant out of a plane during the Vietnam War. Is that Dumbo Drop, the second one? Yes. Well, the first one. 
The first one is, is eight legged. Eight no. legged South American stowaway did the nasty with one of the locals, and now this small town's only hope is John Goodman. Oh boy. I don't know what the first I don't know what the first movie. An eight legged? It is a, it is a was, movie about spiders. There was a spider movie with John Goodman in it. Ara- is it arachnophobia? It is. Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia drop? How do you mash that together? There's the, the, a, a word that you're missing. From the second movie, from the Dumbo Drop movie. It is Dumbo. Oh, Arachnophobia Operation Dumbo Drop? Yeah! yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I've never seen Arachnophobia. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's not it's not the best, but it's a I fun I know time. John Goodman was in it. Yeah, he's, he's like, like oh, for a too. second. Man, I thought for a second you were gonna pull out like a like a VHS of Operation Jumbo Drop. Signed production stills. Yeah. Here's a maquette of the elephant they used. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, listen. Thank you so much. You're awesome. And listeners of the show, thank you so much for checking this out. And if you'd like to perhaps become a patron of the Valley Folk and help us keep this thing afloat and support comedy and all that good stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash the Valley Folk. And also this game that we just played called the Movie Movie Game has a Kickstarter, which um, is still going on, by the way. Link is in the, in the description. You can go to bit.ly.com slash movie movie game and you can go there and pre-order this and the expansion packs of TV movie game and video game movie game. And if you're interested in doing that, it helps us out so that we know how many to order. Thanks, folks.